On screen, we see our function that returns the value of pi. Let's make it a bit more interesting, this time using the case expression. The case expression is very much like the case command in many programming languages. It helps us control the workflow of the business rule by creating a fork or a junction in which the business rule can take one of many possible routes. In this lecture, I want to upgrade my function so that it could return more than the pi number. I wanted to also return the Euler's number, also known as the base of the natural logarithm, or simply E. Its value is approximately 2.72. But I don't want the function to return both numbers in the same time. I want it to return just one of the two, depending on an incoming parameter. I want this input parameter to be a text data element. This parameter will be used by the user to ask for the desired number. Also, I want to remove the existing boolean and number input elements as they are playing no part in this example. To remove the input elements, I first need to enter to edit mode. Now the various edit buttons are displayed so I can use them. I will mark the two rows of the elements and click on the remove button. Another thing I have to remove is the top expression. Right now the top expression is the constant pi, but I don't want it to be returned in all cases, only when the user asks for it. I will remove the top expression using the little icon next to it. Notice that removing elements from this screen does not mean they get deleted. We are just removing their roles in this particular function. There are no input elements at the moment. We need to add a new data element so that the user will be able to choose between the two constants. To add the element, I will click the Add New Data Object button. I want a single value parameter, so I will choose Element. The default element type is text, exactly what I want. I will give the element a name and some text and move on to the object screen. Of course we want to save the function at this time. Notice the DE prefix I gave to this element? This is a short for data element. I recommend using such prefix notations. It makes things more organized and searchable. Okay, so the element is basically created, but something is missing. Except its name, there is nothing that restricts this element from accepting any kind of text. I want to make the two options, pi and e, more explicit. For that end, I will define a domain for this element. A domain in BRF Plus acts just like a domain in ABAP. It basically restricts or guides the user to enter a value from a very specific list of values. To create the domain list, I first need to click on the domain values tab. The list is currently empty. To fill it, I have two options. Adding an already existing constant or creating a new one. That's right, the domain list will be composed of other constant expressions. Since the pi constant we have created earlier is of type number and not text, it will not fit in here. I will create two new text constants, one for signifying pi and the other for e. The creation of those constants will be done in a similar way to how I showed you in a previous lecture. Pay attention!
Nice! I have a domain list with two options to choose from. All I need to do now is to activate this text element and go back to the function to continue with the process. Ok, the input element is in place, but I still missing a top expression. As I promised, I will create a case expression. The case expression can have two result types. Either the expression returns a value or it does some action. In this example, we want to return a value of course. Now, the forking in a case expression is always determined on the ground of some other expression. In this example, I want to make a decision of what number to return based on the input element I just created. As it is already defined in the function as an input parameter, it is part of the context, so I can choose it straight from there. A new line is now shown. In this line, we should specify a single case and what to return in this case. I will specify the case when the user selects the pi number. I will use the pi number constant as the result. The pi case is in place. To add the e case, I need to add another row. I do it like this. I will specify the case where the user selects the E option. Now, because I haven't created a number constant of E like I did with pi, I will demonstrate the option of direct input. Although we only declare two options, it is always a good idea to maintain the otherwise part. This is especially useful if we want the rule to indicate that something out of ordinary has happened. In this example, I want to return the number minus one if the user misbehaved and specified a number that is not on my list. That's it! The case expression is complete! I will activate it and return to the function. The function is also good to go! Let's do some testing! Let's try both of the options. Noticed how I could choose a value out of a list? This is thanks to the domain we created for the input element. Now let's enter some unexpected value. Marvelous! The function works as it should and you guys just learned how to create and use case expressions. Moving on, 